this is, this is, this is. Welcome to another one. We got another one, you guys. Episode 450. I've been on the Facebook, um, Facebook, you know, well, it's the MHP Facebook group. It's a group. It's not a page. It's a group. Those things are different. I don't know why, but they're different. <laughs> anyway, you have to ask to join. And, and of course, if anybody asks to join, I, I let them join. But there's people that either get hacked or they're literally not real people. And they're trying to spam the page all the time. It's crazy. And, you know, some friends of mine have, like, mentioned, hey, I, yeah, I think your page, you know, got corrupted or something like that. And I'm like, no, no, no. I looked. It's not corrupted. It's just we're just getting attacked by spammers. So we, I get like in my feed, I'll get one of those spam messages. It's like Simon Cowell, R.I.P. or Sylvester Stallone on his deathbed or something like like what? And it's just something like you're like no way, and you just want to click on it. Just you know, I I don't want to click on it, but I'm sure people want to click click on it. So um, I've been. You know, going like, why is this here? So I'll I'll usually go through, I'll go into my group, into my in administrator little shield tab thing, and that'll have like anything you know, uh, anybody that's reported it as potential spam, that kind of stuff. But then there's there's a group of just things I need to approve or disapprove of, or deny, I guess, and and. A bunch of posts are there, and it's almost—it's always spam. I mean, anybody that's no, a normal poster or even just a normal person, you can just post on the group, and there's no like review process. So it gets—it gets on there, and then I'll—I'll I'll look at it. If I don't like it, I'll delete it. You know. So if it's spam, I'll delete it. If it's there's really, I'll even leave somebody's random post about their band now and again, but it gets to be too much sometimes, you know, and I'm trying to like make sure the conversations are, you know, the people in the group having conversations aren't getting all this weird random spam where they could potentially get their whole, you know, account hacked, you know, their whole system corrupted. I don't want that. So I go in, deny, 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 deny. But the thing I'm, the reason I'm talking about this is because like, it's like a spam avalanche. It's an avalanche of spam, a spam avalanche, and I I just don't understand why all of a sudden. Maybe because there's more traffic there, or like slightly more traffic. I mean, there really there kind of is, but I mean, if you're not on the the My Career Podcast Facebook group, I encourage you all to join. Um, I'm not I'm not giving you a good uh, representation, but I guess I am because I'm telling you I am the administrator, just me. I don't have any peons or people that I, I don't mean to say peons. That's the wrong word. I don't have anybody anybody help me out with that. Um, not even Bob McKnight. He probably should be, but uh, I loathe to give him a job like that because he's so good at just the editing and the being a funny guy. So anyway, Spamalanche, all this stuff. You shouldn't be seeing it too often because usually it, it gets caught. Um, but now and again, there'll be if I if I'm not looking for like a few days, I'll go on there and there'll be a post about Simon Cowell or Sylvester Stallone or you know like there's different celebrities and different weird posts that they put. Or or the other one that's gotten on there a lot is people sharing an ad for like some weird furniture, like cheap cheap manufactured blow up furniture or something like that like something that some millennials might in enjoy but <laughs> i don't know i i'm kidding about the millennials thing but um just weird stuff man it's like so crazy so i'm sure you guys are seeing it everywhere i just i just wanted to i was just thinking about that i was literally just cleaning that up right before this i pushed record on this so maybe that's why um, thanks for all your calls, you guys. I got a couple calls. We'll be getting to those, uh, today, in fact, and, uh, I'd love to, to get more. So 360-830-6660. And, um, let me know what's up. Maybe it's your birthday. Tell me what you're doing. Call me in on your birthday. Let me know what you're doing. 
if you have any plans, maybe you don't have plans and I want to know that too, because I think not everybody has plans on their birthday and they feel bad about that. And I want, I want people to be assured and people to know that you're not alone. I've, I've had many birthdays where I haven't had any plans. You know, there's, there's been birthdays where, you know, I've had a surprise party, uh, thrown it for me. Holly's thrown, um, big bashes at like a bowling alley renting the whole place out, things like that. But then I've also had literally no plans on my 40th birthday. No plans. Didn't do anything. Now, I might have done something, but I didn't have plans. I don't know if you guys can hear. I can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it. But my dog is snoring, and <laughs> it's kind of distracting me. There she is. You see her? Boom. Ruby Sue. We love you. All right. Um, so we got a spam a lunch and I'm on it. It kind of makes things more fun, you know, because if I go onto the Facebook group and there's nothing there and there's no new comments. Now, now there is usually new comments when I put up a new. I just threw my pen. When I put up a new, <laughs> a new episode, there's new comments. But, um, you know, lately there has been a lot more commentary back and forth we've been talking about the stanford prison experiment we've been talking about uh what i don't know other things um i saw i saw oh we were talking about some some uh f you know banana artificial banana flavors that was a while back with daniel joss leary um the reason why i thought of Jan daniel is because he put up a great meme the other day so i just want to have a meme shout out the meme shout out is uh mxpx memes and uh on facebook it's daniel joss leary but the meme is let us ride and i was just like how did i never think of that before he put that meme up it's so good it's so oh my god such a pun you know so good so let us ride in, in the I'm going to have to put like the I'll put it up right here you know when I edit I'll I'll let you guys see it but it's it's like it's a giant lettuce and somebody's writing it I can't remember if it was the Poconetcha punk writing it or if it was just some random person I'm going to look it up I can't I can't wait got to find out Okay here we go Oh yeah it's the Poconetcha punk Boom, let us ride. I know that's backwards, so I'll um I'll just put it up probably digitally. But um on the YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see that. Um my YouTube is Mike Herrera Video. That's uh I'm sure you can find it just by typing in Mike Herrera. But um Mike Herrera Video is the actual handle of the YouTube. And uh I put up the Mike Herrera Podcast on there, I put up other stuff. Um, now and again, you know, solo stuff, some MXPX stuff too. Um, just whatever, you know, whatever. It's my page. It's, it's not MXPX, but, you know, since I'm a big part of MXPX, you know, it, it, it creeps in quite a bit. But um, that's, that's where we're at with that. So anyway, <laughs> automation, you know, like you can, I could probably automate this. I was thinking about that. And I just wanted to say that automation isn't 100% accurate. And neither is human manually doing doing something like a human doing something manually is not 100% accurate either. But I feel like I have enough of that weird brain where I, 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 I'm OCD in some ways and then not in others at all. So that's the thing is, is I can pick I, – I don't know if I can pick and choose, um, but – it seems like I can because I'm not OCD about everything. Like I can throw clothes on the floor and leave them there for a week. No problem. I will not worry about it. But there's other things where like countertops or even countertops I can leave stuff like at the studio. It's a mess everywhere. And I always want to clean, but I just don't have time. So I don't feel like I'm truly OCD, but not in that way anyway. But there's certain things that – I need to do like 
I've talked about this before, but but this is really still a thing. And I guess it's it doesn't have to be. I could force myself out of it possibly, but the thing is, what is the thing? What is the thing? Um, the thing is, I I cannot like something if it changes a nine to a different number. So if I see a nine on a social media post, I cannot like it. That's it. So like if 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 you have a a nine or a two thirty nine or a forty nine or whatever, if it ends on nine, and I see it, and I like it, I will not push heart on that Instagram post or on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And it's even so bad as to where I'll see, like on Facebook, you'll see like blah blah blah, you know, blah blah blah, and ninety nine others. So I'll know that ninety nine plus that person and that person, that's 101. The number's actually 101. So I know that in my mind, but I still don't touch it because it's the nine looking back at me, you know? And I don't want to move that nine. So even though the the total number is 101, because it would be like, it'd be like Daniel Joss Leary, Simon Cowell, and 99 other people liked this post. And I'll be like, ah, I really like this post, but I, yeah, I'm going to wait. So I'll just, sometimes I'll come back to my friend's posts and even my wife's posts. I, I will not like anybody's post if it says nine, no matter how much I like it. Now that's probably one of the weirdest things that I do in my mind. Um, another thing that I've talked about this before, and I'll say it again. Um, I, I will not set an alarm to wake up or to remind myself to do something, I will not set a zero. I will, you guessed it, I will set nine. But if it's, if it's I want to wake up earlier, if I want to wake up at 4.44, I'll put 4.44. If I want to wake, <laughs> if I want to wake up at 4.45, I'll put 4.44, <laughs> as you can see. So I like, I like 4.44, I like, 333, I like 990, there is no 999, <laughs> maybe at Burger King, but uh, so, maybe that's too expensive, check the price, um, <laughs> speaking of which, does that Burger King song get stuck in anybody else's head, or just, I'm sure everybody's like, no, why did you mention the Burger King jingle, now it's in my head, and it's never coming out, Wipe it clean. Wipe it clean. <laughs> uh, I can't lie. I love that jingle, and I hate it all at the same time. Like, like there's, there's, yeah, it's too much. Anyway, OCD about certain things. Should we go on? Should we move on? Oh, just to finish, finish up about the the alarm thing. Like, there's no really hard and fast rule, except for I will not put it on an even, even zero. Or an odd five. I won't put it on an even zero or an odd five. So what that means is 10 o'clock, it'll be always 9.59, you know, or 9.57. That's okay. 9.56 is even okay. So it's not about even or odd. It's about, it's about those whole fives and those whole tens and, like, to keep it odd. I don't know why, and I have no reason, literally, uh, I think it was born out of the fact that my, my favorite number is nine, but then it became an obsession all to itself in different ways. And so it's kind of a game, a game that I probably waste too much time and energy and thought on. Um, and when Blink-182 named their, not last record, but the record, bef maybe it was their last record. Yeah, they named it nine. I was like, I get why they did that. It was their ninth album. It'd be like us calling our next album 11. But uh, I was kind of annoyed by it because that's my number, nine. But at the same time, I was like, of course, that's, of course they're going to call it nine because nine is the best number. And I see nines everywhere. And this is just another addition to me seeing nines. I see nines. I see nines. And maybe that's why I don't, it's not a bad thing that I see nines. It's a good thing. I love seeing nines. And so when I see nine, when I see a player with nine, 
this, that, the other. Like, in fact, a friend of mine ordered me a Kraken jersey. And I was like, hey, I was like, okay, cool. But as long as it's got number nine on it, <laughs> so it's got nine on it. So I'm just obsessed with nines. And maybe that says something about my personality. I don't really know what that says. Maybe somebody could call in. Maybe there's maybe there's a certified um, lunatic um, wrangler, a.k.a. psychiatrist or therapist um, that could call in and let me know. And then maybe we'll, next we'll do my dreams. I don't dream a lot, by the way. I, I, I dream sometimes. Like every now and then I'll, I'll remember a dream. But usually I sleep really hard and I'm just and then I wake up. That's it. And I wake up groggy for sure. But um, that's it. Me. Do you remember your dreams a lot? Like, does anybody have any insane dreams? Any recurring dreams that that um, they might want to know what they mean? I mean, I can't promise you'll know, but I can look. I can Google it. <laughs> I can look it up. Uh, anyway, um, let's get to a call. All right, let's get to a call. Let's get to a voicemail. Let's do this. Here we go. Hey, Mike, this is uh, Shannon McCauley calling. Uh, just listening to episode 444. Heard about your uh, little break-in and uh, ser stealing your uh, notepad and shit like that out of your car. So that's very unfortunate for uh, Tumble Down and your lyrics. Uh, I had a question about, um, did you ever get them back? Uh, like I said, I'm on episode 444, so I do have some catching up to do, but, um, I'm, uh, MXDX fan since 1996, uh, also a Tumble Down fan, uh, mostly, uh, Mike Herrera fan. Uh, thank you so much, and I hope to see you. I'm from Toronto, Ontario. I hope to see you guys out here one day. It's been a long, long time. And um, thank you to your podcast. You've in influenced me to, uh, me and my buddy have launched a uh, punkrockdadcast.com podcast. Cool. Uh, I used to run Ontario Punk dot com for a long time and just uh trying to get the uh, local scene here in uh toronto back on its feet it's been suffering through covid so uh i think i've talked to you a few times and your managers or management agencies to try to uh revive the scene out here would love to get you back out here thank you so much i love your podcast Cheers. Shane, thanks for calling in, man. Dude, it, that was a rough trip, the, the, that, that tumble down trip. And uh, for those that didn't catch it, it's episode 444, I think. Yeah, 444, where I kind of go into that, that story about losing all the lyrics, losing my journals. Um, last week, I was talking about journaling, actually, and, and I mentioned it again. So it's a little re reoccurring theme here. Um, so Shane, hopefully you're, you're catching up soon You can catch up and hear this episode 440 or 450. You got a little ways to go, but those are all good episodes. Take your time, do your thing. Um, so the notepad, the lyrics, the journals, the money, passport, all my gadgets, Computer power supply. Pretty sure not my computer. Somehow. How the hell did that happen? I don't know. But I've had my computer stolen. So maybe it was that time. I've had my computer stolen twice. <laughs> um, I'm, tr I'm having trouble remembering if it was in Mexico. But I, I, I don't think so. I think, I think somehow I had my computer in the in the venue with me, but then my power supply was in my backpack and, you know, my passport and then some money and, you know, things that I shouldn't have left in hindsight, 2020, I shouldn't have left in the van. Uh, but no, 
sadly, Shane, we did not recover. Nothing. Didn't get anything back. Um, you know, at this point, obviously, it doesn't matter. At the time, it was heartbreaking. It was really rough. But uh, we, we, we made it out. We got we played some shows and some people kind of overpaid for us to come and play at their house. And, and it was great. You know, we really had a great time with it. And um, speaking of Canada, though, you know, you being from Toronto, we will be back. MXPX will be back. Appreciate it. We love playing Toronto. We love playing Canada. Ontario is, is, a, is a great province. <laughs> we were in the, the province of B.C., British Columbia, and Tumble Down was doing a show up there. And I, I don't know if I've told this story. I'm not going to tell necessarily the whole story. Maybe that's for another time. But this is a, a little offshoot. But uh, speaking of... It, it, this happened... <sighs> I want to say this happened before... Before the Mexico thing happened. Um, and the, that's why Mexico was so rough on us. Um, we went up to Canada to play a show, a private party. And... We got turned away at the border because we had booked a show the night before at a bar. We were just going to do a little show, nothing, not getting paid really. Just like if people, if people came in, he would give us, you know, a, a bit of money. But um, we weren't really worried about it, right? And we came through, and this lady looks us up, tumble down on social media, on Twitter, and we're just like, and she's like, so. uh so is, is your band playing tonight at the blah, blah, blah pub or, you know, wherever we're playing? <laughs> we're just like, what? What? You know, <laughs> I was trying to play dumb. Like, I don't know. I mean, yeah, but I didn't know you had to have a permit, blah, blah, blah. Um, so then we got turned away. We got turned away. Had to go and park at a friend of a friend's house right over the border in whatever town that is um, in Washington State. Um, so back over the border to get to Vancouver, BC, Vancouver, BC, British Columbia. Um, we were heading to, I think, Surrey, the Surrey area or something. It was, um, it was an, it was definitely a, a little bit of a suburb of, of Toronto, of, sorry, of, of Vancouver, but it was, there was nice houses, but it's obvious that there was a lot going on there because we went, we played this show, had a blast, um, People treated us great, and it was, you know, the, the people were friends of my, like, one of my best friends in Bremerton. So, like, it was, like, friends of ours, you know, and we do the show, we do the party, we're having the best time of our lives. We're just annihilated at the end of the night. We all go into the room, and, and um, we, we pack up all our stuff. We park, we're parked right outside their gate in the back alley, and we go into the room and we go to sleep, and we wake up the next day, our van doors open, just like just a little bit open, and everything behind, everything there is is gone except for the upright base, which is huge. They left that, and they left, I think. Uh, they left one other thing. I don't even remember what it was, like the kick truck. No, they took all the drums. They took all of our amps. They took all of our guitars, um, Jack's Fire Thunderbird, Firebird, whatever it is. My, um, it was a Takamine 2007 Custom. It was that one that I'm, I'm playing on the covers on, on Empty Bottle or, or whatever it is. Um, Actually, I don't know if it's on the cover, but um, anyway, they just took twenty, twenty or thirty thousand dollars of stuff from us. Um, if it was retail, maybe, maybe not used, but that drum set alone was just like an antique drum set, really beautiful Ludwig. Um, it was heartbreaking, and you know, the guy was like. Yeah, all right. You know, you know, I'll get you my insurance guy. We'll make sure that you guys get your money back. Blah blah blah. And I put in, you know, all of our stuff. 
submitted it to the insurance guy. He was on the phone with them, and he's just pretty much like, nah, none of your stuff was covered. Like, what? Why? Because it was outside the gate. Yeah, but that was we were still in his driveway. It was his driveway. It wasn't on the street. It was his driveway. It was his property. They just didn't want to pay us. I mean, I, I probably would have had to hire a lawyer. It probably would have cost me, at the end of the day, as much money as we would have gotten from the insurance claim. So, so there we were starting at square, square one, all our pedal boards gone, all our DIs, all our cabling. Um, so, you know, once by the time we got to, to Mexico, we had already ha been ripped off, you know, and it was demoralizing for, sh for sure. You know, it was insane. Um, but like I said, you know, we made it through. Uh, we we did we didn't make it through that tour. We had to cancel a bunch of dates, but we made it through. We made it back home. You know, it was like ah, I could write I could write a little novel, a little novella about some of these adventures we've been on, and and same goes for MXPX. You know, um, so many stories. All right, uh, we'll be back. We'll be back to Canada. Uh, but but just remember, folks, Canadians steal stuff, too. Most Canadians are super polite, but we have been ripped off in Mexico and Canada and Australia and, of course, the U.S. So we've, those are the, the, the four countries that I can remember right now where we've actually been ripped off, like, more than just, like, uh, you know, a, a T-shirt or something, you know. Um, and, you know, I wonder if there's more countries and I just don't remember or didn't even know we were ripped off. Uh, but Mexico, um, Australia, a couple times in Australia, in fact. One time we got our, our drum back. This, these guys were trying to steal our drums at the end of the show, ran off with a, a snare drum. And uh, we ran after them and, and, and um, JJ, our roadie at the time, J.J. Janes, he ran, knocked him out, took our drum back. <laughs> like, don't, don't fuck with the drum. So we got it back. But um, the other time was, was uh, we got our, our RV ripped off when we were parked at Sydney Harbor for a Warp Tour cruise. In fact, the same Warp Tour cruise where we um, were... Uh, Fletcher from Pennywise, the guitar player, big guy, great guy, but is a little unruly. So <laughs> un funny, funny use of words. But uh, Yuri, Yuri uh, was like uh, jamming next to him, and then everybody was moshing, and he just picked up Yuri and threw him across the room, a stage dive. Like it was like he threw him onto the crowd of people. So it was like all these people like fell down and he like fell into them. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was like one of the best things that's ever happened to to Yuri and to us. <laughs> so so that was fun. But anyway, when we came back from that that night, which was a fun night, we played played a couple of, you know cover songs um, after after the uh, the cover band got kicked off stage by Fletcher, and he made a bunch of bands go up and play some songs. So he made us, MXPX, go up and play some songs as well. And um, during Bro Him was when they were playing Bro Him and everybody was jamming out and dancing. And that's when he threw Yuri. <laughs> so good. So good. Uh, all right. Ne next, next one? All right, let's go to the next one. Here we go. Hey, Mike, Bill from South Carolina here. Uh, hearing you talk about Arthur and uh, sort of the screamo origins of that band, uh, it made me realize, has that first Arthur EP ever been put out on vinyl? And uh, if not, uh, don't you think it should? Also, I um, feel like it's probably counterproductive to tell it to an artist, but I feel like that first Arthur EP is one of your most important works. Um, and also the Andrea that's listed for photography and the album credits, of that first R3P, I was wondering if that's the same Andrea from the MXPX song called Andrea, and also if you could offer any 
story about that if it's so inclined or if you'd like to. If not, that's cool too. Thanks. Later. All right. All right. Was it Bill or Phil? I couldn't quite catch it. Um, yeah, you know, it's funny hearing you say that the Arthur EP is one of my most important works. And I wonder, I'm sure you have your reasons for that. Um, maybe it's the energy, maybe it's the rawness, the, the just the, the surrealness of, of the lyrics and the, I don't know. I mean, but if you don't like the music, then you're not going to like it. If you don't like raw sounding rough recordings you're not gonna like it it's out of tune vocals there's no auto tune back i mean back in those days it probably existed in some sort of very very vulgar basic format outboard gear meaning not digitally in a in an app or in a box or something like that on a, on a soft piece of software like literally computer chips inside a uh, a physical box in a rack where you have a line going in and a line coming out. That, that's what auto-tune was. And the first time we ever actually used that was with Jerry Finn on uh, The Ever-Passing Moment. He did like a word or two. That's it. Just a word or two, and he'd punch it in. He'd literally record it. So for those of you, you know, you, you know and then we hear, at that point, it was like Cher used auto-tune, and that was it. So, so Blink-182 started using it live and... I think a lot of pop artists use it live so that you don't have a ton of rap artists use it live now. Now I remember hearing Kanye, Kanye West um, on Saturday night live and he was singing this auto tune and it was like pretty terrible and I just didn't like it at the time. And, and, and now I realize I just didn't understand it at all. And, and whether or not you like it is beside the point, but what they were doing was, they were using the auto tune as an effect and the whole point was to make it sound weird and make it sound messed up. And so with, through that lens, it makes complete sense to me, you know, and, but through the punk, you know, through like a punk rock lens, it doesn't make as much sense to me. Like I want it to sound like for me, I want it to sound natural. I want my voice to sound like my voice. And so if auto tune is ever used, I don't want it to be obvious. Now switch that around. There's a song like say my solo song called, um, new year's Eve. It's on YouTube. It's probably on, on streaming too. You can just look up my name. Um, but that song has auto tune on it as an effect as an effect it's meant to be really tight really computery digital sounding modern sounding and so i think anyway i'm getting a little off point auto-tune but um that first ep was literally recorded live that arthur ep loneliness is bliss was recorded live in the studio steve kravak we had we had had the mxpx stuff set up drums amps all that but so the drums were set up we had recorded our christmas song at big bear studios or is it bear bear creek studios um kind of out in the country east seattle and we had we had an extra day and that's why we decided to go ahead and do loneliness is bliss the ep it wasn't an ep at the time it was just let's demo these songs so it was meant to be a demo that's what we told Steve Kravac. They're like, hey, we want to demo these songs. We want to get these down. And so he just set us up with the drums, and we set up my amp, Tom's amp, Neil's bass amp. It was probably DI, to be honest. I don't remember. But we were literally in the room together, and I'm singing into a mic live, and there is no overdubs, not one. So everything you hear on that is just plain live. Like, sure, we started over a couple times. Like, oh, let's do that again. But it's just not that. We didn't think really it was going to be a release. We thought it was going to be demos to then re-release, you know, uh, a full-length album or something like that. So, you know, 10 years later, we had 10 years, 10 years, uh, Watch the Years Crawl By, I think came like 10 years after that EP. It was It was a long time. But anyway, both... If you like Loneliness is Bliss, definitely check out 
uh, watch the years crawl by. We recently just sold out of all the vinyl at the at the MXPX merch arsenal. We had the Arthur album in uh, on vinyl, and it's sold out now. So sorry if you all slept on that. Now to your original question: Is the Arthur EP "Loneliness Is Bliss" ever been pressed to vinyl? No, never been pressed to vinyl. It's always been on CD, and now it's d digital. You can. I think you can go listen to it online streaming, but never, never press to, to vinyl. Now, will we? I don't know. I guess, I guess maybe, I guess we could, uh, you know, honestly, like it's not a bad idea, but I, I got to think that there's way more people that want MXPX stuff pressed. So it's just one of those things where it just never gets there because the demand is not high enough. Like we're not, it's not like something I'm gonna wanna push, push. So it'd be like, like when we did these vinyl reissues um, last year or late last year, that's something that was absolutely been asked about over and over and over and over and over for years, all these, th those three albums. And that's why we did those three albums. And I feel like there's other albums that we probably would do before we did this Arthur EP on vinyl. But like I say, hey, that's a great idea. You know, if if the world was more open and there was more time and more money and more vinyl pressing plants, I think it would definitely get done. But um, right now it's in a long line, a long line of, of things we want to get done. Um, but if we ever do anything with Arthur again, then we should probably add that EP into the mix, reintroduce people into that. But but for now, I mean, I think we're, we're on the MXPX trajectory, and when MXPX slows down, um, maybe we'll get back into that. I, I'd, I'd definitely be interested to hear your thoughts on why it's the most important, one of the most important works. You didn't say the most. You say one of the most important works that I've done. And I would be remiss if I didn't answer your Andrea question. Andrea did the photos for us. She wasn't really a photographer, but you know, she was my girlfriend, so <laughs> it made sense. So yeah, uh, she did the photos for us and we wanted, I told her, you know, we wanted an art deco vibe. Um, and that's kind of how we dressed up, you know, with like a, a 1950s sailor look and, um, and yeah, it's the same one. So my my, uh, my girlfriend from the song, Andrea. Yeah, you got me, you got me. Now the, the story behind it, uh, you know, like I said, she wasn't a photographer and we just wanted this art deco look. And she she helped, she either did the, the graphic design or she helped do it. Um, because back then it was like, you know, my mom had a computer. I might have had a computer. I'm really trying to, hard to remember. I think I did. Now, one more, one more. Uh, this was a self-release. We released this on Rock City Records, our my own record label that was just basically MXPX. It was MXPX, but Tom and Yuri didn't really do anything for it, just because I mean, what, it was all the things that I did for MXPX. I did for this too. So I was always the more administrational guy in mxpx um except for maybe on the road tom tom would help me out on the road yuri would help out on the road uh with directions and maps hey, Mike, Bill from South. oh sorry i hit that again uh maps and things like that uh anyway but for the record label it was just me it was uh probably my mom yes my mom she because she was always helping with anything that i was doing like i'd be like hey can you sign us up for this service can you sign us up for this service or blah 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 um and sometimes i would do that my, that stuff myself but but then andrea was sort of like on the design tip helping us out with that photos artistic stuff um only literally because she was my girlfriend um not and I'm not saying it wasn't because she wasn't good at, at it. She was as good as I was, if not better, for sure. Um, but, like I said, you know, I, I, if I had a different girlfriend, that other girlfriend probably would have been the one that <laughs> had taken our photos. Uh, anyway, um, that EP, you know, 
it's uh yeah we got some the reason why it that ep actually got big was because we had distribution through through um ah, what was it um having trouble it was it was um the label that that um social distortion was not the label social distortion was on it was um it was a different label than that but it was it was the guy that owned social distortions management company like his manager forever rebel waltz no rich egan no 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 see sorry you guys i'm just trying to remember things in my head this is a terrible podcast situation <laughs> i'm just sitting here rambling i apologize you guys um rich egan so it was um it was uh, i have i have like i have the late i can see the logo kind of you know i'm just like oh my god there was a great comp that mxpx was on um and face to face was on it and um it was it was like all covers it was really it was really great um Somebody right now is like it's bad. Vig it's like vigilant v vigilante records. No, 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 no. Vagrant. <sighs> That's what it is. All right, all right. Vagrant records. So we had distribution through Vagrant records, and Rich Egan was uh, who is managing Face to Face. Okay, that it all makes sense now. Um, they had good distribution, and that really got our EP out there, where we really had no business. Uh, being a kind of a a band that people knew about but because mxpx was doing so well arthur was all, all, all also doing well like we had we could have been a real band we just didn't really take the time to do it because mxpx was so doing so well and i remember we did a tour with the ataris and we went down the the west coast down to california we played played some some pretty big shows and we played some smaller clubs as well and that was that was so much fun and you know opening for the guitar it worked somehow and, and and i know i know that part of part of chris chris rowe from the ataris wanted to play some of what we were playing he really dug that stuff so you know maybe we accidentally influenced some of that you know graveyard of the atlantic and for that i am sorry you guys i'm sorry if you're fans of the Ataris. Now, it's a good record in retrospect, but it's not necessarily what people wanted at the time uh, because it is uh, shoegazery, uh, took forever, you know, all, all these different things. But really, at the end of the day, there's some good songs on there. And Chris is Chris. You can, you can, you can hear through it all and hear Chris's songwriting. And Chris is a great songwriter. Um, so anyway, yeah, Arthur was, we really did have a nice little jump with that EP. And we just didn't follow it up with anything. You know, we had, we had this record for, you know, we, we kind of made and then we just never finished it. And finally, you know, years later, I'm like, you know what, let's finish this record. So I got it transferred from two inch analog tape that we had recorded it on at Robert Lang Studios, transferred that to digital Pro Tools. Um, actually, transferred that to a Mackie uh, d uh, digital 24 recorder D D 24 R Jeez, I mean or is it DR 24 I don't know what the number is but it's a 24 channel it was before Pro Tools it was after we had the first recording medium in my studio um, at the clubhouse which was which is now the merch arsenal it used to be a recording studio that place was called the clubhouse and that had ADAT machines so we had three ADATs eight tracks each totaling 24 tracks that was our first thing and they look like vcr tapes v vhs tapes and once we got rid of that we got this mackie 24 digital recorder that was like a big box and that hooked up to our d8b mackie digital bus digital eight bus recorder or console not recorder digital eight bus console and that was like a fully automated electronic console and so when you hear, uh, like, when you hear the Renaissance EP, that was recorded on that Mackie 24 track recorder through that Mackie digital 8 bus console. And it was really cool, but at the same time for punk rock, it was too clean. 
and it was too separated. It was too, a lot of things, you know, it was kind of hollow, but it was my first time ever like touching the stuff. Like, I didn't know how to, EQ. I still don't know how to EQ things like really that good, but <laughs> you know, I, I figured it out, you know, eventually, but, um, that's why those things sound like that is because they were so so we went from the 24 track we got arthur onto that mackie and then from that mackie eventually again we we worked we did that and then that sat for a while and then finally we're like well, we got to get this thing mixed and so i got you know it transferred that to pro tools had to clean it all up had to figure it all out fix a few things record some vocals, finish a few bits, and then send that out um, and had Stefan Edgerton mix it. So that's, that's the, the, the full-length album. That's um, Watch the Years Crawl By. You can hear that anywhere. You can hear that anywhere. Um, anywhere you stream music. Sorry, I thought my, my video was frozen for a second there. Just making sure we're still recording. We are still recording. All right, let's get to one more question. That that that's my uh, Arthur story time for for the episode. But Vagrant Records. That's why we had good distribution on that EP. And then when we released the full length album, we just basically released it to mail order. We didn't really distribute it. We didn't really do ads. We didn't tell people about it much. It was more of like for us. Just let's get this thing out. Let's just you know. Watch the years. I mean, that's why we called it "Watch the Years Crawl By" because it just a lot of the songs are very sentimental, but also it took us forever to release it. You know, and, and we're like, by the time we released it, we're like ten years older. So, don't let ten years go by if you have a special project. Just release it like the "Loneliness Is Bliss" EP. It ain't perfect. It's far from perfect. There's no auto tune. It needed a lot of tender love and care that it didn't get, but that's. Sometimes that doesn't matter. I mean, as evidenced by Bill or Phil. I'm so sorry. I don't know if it's Bill or Phil. It's one of his favorite things we've done. It can't be because of the recording. It's got to be because of the song. So sometimes recordings aren't as imp important. It's about the song, right? Am I right? I would love to hear what you guys think about that. Call in 360-830-6660. All right, one more and then... Uh, Next week, I have some guests, so stay tuned for uh, the, the podcast to switch it up for a second here. All right, one more. Hey, Mike, it's Derek in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, XTX is my all-time favorite band, uh, but my first musical influence was Weird Al Yankovic, and I want to say, you know, as a six-year-old, I mean, he captured my imagination. I still love him. Uh, has you guys ever... You know, when you're out on the road or whatever, it's thought, hey, uh, this song would be awesome if Weird Al did it. That would totally make our day, our lives, whatever. Um, and so another sort of related thing was, are there any, uh, like, lyrics that you all have, uh, that you have written that would say, you know, that, that people would hear, you know, something else, like, you know, the whole Jimi Hendrix, excuse me while I kiss this guy, you know, things like that. Because, uh, or, or, you know, stuff that you've heard a lot or you've noticed yourself. Because when uh, Fever Dream came out, I, uh, I I listened to it, you know, as soon as possible. And I listened to it a couple of times, and I totally heard, I'm Dennis, you're Christine, rather than I'm, you know, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm damaged, you're Christine. Yeah, and I was like, who's Dennis uh, and Christine? Two movie references. But anyway, uh, yeah, so love to hear about that. Thanks. I'm Dennis. You're Christine. Ah, that is hilarious. Yeah, I'm damaged. You're pristine. Um, nowadays, you can just sing karaoke to that song. If you have Apple Spatial Audio, uh, Apple Music, you can go on there and it might be on other things. I've just, I've only tried it on Apple so far and there's a couple, there's anything from anything from can't keep waiting forward, I think. Uh, so it's a couple singles. So say yes. Um, Fever dream, not worries. Um, I'm pretty sure worries was before can't keep waiting. Um, 
anyway, the reason why I mention this is you can do karaoke on your phone. You know, you just you just go to Spatial Audio, you can click on it, and basically you can turn up or down the vocal, and it, it changes. It's it's a trip. I've I've done it to my own songs. Like it it's it works. Now is it like super professional quality or whatever? You know, instrument. It sounds a little different because they're changing some of the frequencies. They're probably doing some sort of like phase reversals with with the fr with the the vocal frequencies so that you don't hear it. I don't know how they're doing this, but um, I think it has to do with with stems. I think it has to do with anything that is in spatial audio has been uploaded. Stems have been uploaded. There's a mix, but the mix have modules. Basically, not just left and right, but they have like a spectrum of sounds and, and different instruments are completely separate. So a stem, basically, for those that don't know, is say you have a song, a mix of a song, and you just have just vocal playing. That's playing, just, that's a stem. So if you record just the vocal and you have that file, that's a, that's a vocal stem. And usually what you would do is record... You record your vocal with the effect on it, with the, the compression compression, and any kind of EQ. You would record that stem just like that. So when you put that into the mix, and so you have your bass stem, and you have your guitar stem, you have your drum stem, you have your synth stem, whatever it is, right? Sample stem. Um, layers. And you can mute, mute. So I can just be playing just drums and then add the bass in, add the guitar in, add the vocal in. So... The spatial audio on, on Apple Music is really cool because you you can hear the layers differently. It's like almost like things are separated, and when you move around, it actually kind of like changes the sound a little bit. So um, it's not for everybody. Probably somebody some people hate it, but I just think it's kind of it's like a different way to listen to music, you know. And and not every you know all the old songs you're not going to have that ability because you literally have to upload stem mixes you have to get somebody like we have to pay somebody to do these mixes and um upload them and send them into the spatial audio apple people and then they make sure they're up there and um yeah obviously i don't know exactly how it all works but <laughs> but it is it is pretty pretty interesting that they have the karaoke so so back to the so now that you know what a stem is the reason why you can do karaoke is because they've got the stems uploaded, and so you can use you can just listen to the spatial audio version. Um, it's called Atmos, A T M O S, Atmos, Atmos mixes, Atmos audio, but it's called but really it's spatial audio, meaning you hear it in spaces. You hear, you hear things not just left and right on a flat plane. You hear it more in depth, almost like three D audio, right? That's kind of the, the the idea behind that. So you have these stems, which is just you you have all your instruments separated and just vocal separated. Well, there you go. That's why they can pull down the vocal, and then it's just you on vocal, and then you're listening to the band play. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool how they do that. Um, and of course, they have the lyrics that go down and they scroll down, and you, so you never have to go. Oh yeah, I'm Dennis. She's Christine again. Uh, if you don't want to, <laughs> you can. I still think that's actually pretty fun. Um, you know, there's responsibility. What's that? Responsibility. A baseball bat. Um. You said you're a huge fan of Weird Al. I must admit, I am also a huge fan of Weird Al. I used to listen to him. I would say before I was into punk rock, I, I got into him as a young boy elementary school i would i would dare to be stupid you know that album i had that album it has like a surgeon it has um yoda 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 so like yeah dare to be stupid all these songs um there's, he even does, I think he does um, a Huey Lewis parody. Um, but anyway, brilliant. I love what he does. Now, I, yeah, I'm sure there's so, there's, there's, I know there's a bunch of, of these like Weird Al type things that people have changed the lyrics to the songs. 
Now, can I remember any of them except for the, you know, r baseball bat one? That's that's just kind of a joke, the baseball bat. Uh, Tom <laughs> Wisniewski, Tom Wisniewski would always go, all right, this is this is Tim Armstrong singing Responsibility. Responsibility, what's that? Responsibility of baseball bat. Just, you know, to make it tough. <laughs> Ah, you guys, I hope you're laughing out there. All right. Um, what else you want to hear about? What else you want to know about? What else you want to talk about? Do you need, do you need my advice? Probably not. Probably not something you need. But would you like my advice? Do you guys want to talk more about PSYOPs and all the things the government's hiding from us and, and all that, you know, like the UFOs is, are UFOs real or are they just government, government, you know, spy planes and things like that like who knows i don't know but it's kind of fun it's kind of fun to talk about all right next week i have guests it's gonna be good maybe we'll talk i'll talk about ufos to those guys see what they think see what's up all right till next time uh shout out to bob mcknight his show is called the bob and katie show uh you can find that anywhere you stream your podcasts and you could do a lot of other things too, but just wanted to let you know. Hey, call in 360-830-6660. We'll make it happen. All right? Love you guys. Have a great one. Peace. This is, this is, this is.